All right, so we have what looks like a simple sequence puzzle. Um, the buttons are up here, we can click on them and things happen, uh, but at this point there's no logic underneath it. So my next step is going to be to define what the sequence is and set this up so that when I uh, press, let's say, spacebar, uh, it will animate that sequence of buttons. So let's see how we can do that. Once again, that's a model level idea that there's a sequence, so we're going to put that in C++. Um, one of the pieces we're going to need here is a, um, here we are. we're going to need the array of buttons. So right now we're creating the buttons and throwing away the references to them. Uh, this is going to be an array of a sequence puzzle button pointers. So the uh, T array here is a uh, a nice array implementation that is part of Unreal Engine. You definitely want to prefer this over, you know, regular old C++ arrays uh, because this one will integrate with blueprints just fine. Um, has some other good utility methods on it too and has good performance, so that's a good thing to use. Uh, let's also set up a sequence itself. And so this will be the actual sequence the, the puzzle, right? The sequence that the player is trying to guess. Um, and these integers then will be indices into this button array, so I can easily uh, see which button I need to press next. Um, good, so another piece of plumbing that I said I needed here was the ability to tell the puzzle to play the sequence. So I'm going to add a U function, which is blueprint callable, and a blueprint implementable event. Okay, so let's tear into this a little bit. It's public, so anybody can see it. It's a U function, which tells us this is a function that's going to integrate with the whole Unreal ecosystem. Blueprint callable means, of course, it can be called from blueprints. Now, this is a really important piece. This says that the implementation of this method is actually not going into C++, but it's going into my blueprint subclass. Okay, good. Uh, let's head over to sequence puzzle button. We're going to need a way to tell this to highlight itself. So I'm going to do that this way. Uh, it's conventional here uh, to use a, a B prefix to tell us this is a Boolean. And this will be a U function that's also a blueprint callable and a blueprint implementable event. So there's a couple different ways we could deal with highlighting, right? We could have a set highlight and remove highlight method. We could use this approach where we send a parameter. Uh, we could send a parameter which is maybe a float that tells us how long it should be highlighted for. Um, this approach is going to work okay for, the, for our purposes. So now we should be able to throw this at the compiler and start seeing how these integrations work. So, uh, oh, you know, um, we edited the .h file, but we didn't update here. So I want to make sure that when I create these buttons, I add them to my button array. So this will be a button. So we'll end up with four buttons in the buttons array. Also, I'm going to set up a uh, kind of a stock sequence for testing purposes. So let's just do this real simply as um, like this. Then we can say sequence.add i. And so we should end up with a sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, um, which again should be convenient for testing. All right. And let's once again throw that at the compiler or throw the compiler at it if you prefer. Let's see, so the first thing we'll do is get into our level blueprint. And I want to get a reference to my puzzle down here. And we can say when we press spacebar, we're gonna play the sequence. All right, see, this is very cool. So I can send this play sequence event to my sequence puzzle because over in C++, I've declared this function here, even though I don't yet have an implementation for it. So now I'll go into blueprints for the sequence puzzle, which is up, up until now is just the data blueprint, and we can add that event, which is play sequence. 
oops, that's what we call it. We actually want to define it. Here it is. Great, so handle this event. Um, you know, just for a moment, let's uh, make sure the plumbing is okay. That's good. Um, right, there's another piece of this we're going to need, which is that highlight method. So let's go ahead and implement that too, so we don't forget. And that'll be over in the blueprint for the sequence puzzle button. And this will be event, uh, oh no, highlight. Here, event highlight. You can see that this um, parameter comes through as a Boolean. So in order to highlight this, we need to be able to call the, uh, set the parameters on the material. So this should be okay. We should be able to just do something like this, right? If it's highlighted, oops, well, I guess we should ask that question. Is it highlighted? So we can say if, if it's highlighted, we do this. And if it's not highlighted, that is the highlight is being turned off, then we do that. And uh, you know, we probably could simplify some of this code then by just calling highlight with uh, a true or false. That way we don't repeat ourselves needlessly. Okay. Um, so even with plague sequence not working, we can verify, yeah, the highlight is still working on click. So that's good. All right. So let's go over to our play sequence. Um, let's start just by playing the first element of the sequence. Um, now, a little bit of this is uh, just blueprint wrangling at this point. So if, you know, if you've done all this in blueprints before, maybe you skip ahead a little bit. But let me show you what this looks like. Um, we can now get the sequence which was defined in C++ over here. We can get that within blueprints because we made it a blueprint read-only. And we can get its zeroth element, right? That's the first element. And we can also get the buttons <coughs> and, oops. we can get the corresponding button based on the sequence order, right? So this should be uh, actually button zero because we have this hard-coded sequence, but in general, this should get us that button. Uh, and we should be able to say, uh, highlight that button, like so. Right, let's start with that. Sure enough, I press spacebar and this became highlighted. Uh, of course, we need it to unhighlight, so we can just throw in a delay node here um, maybe half a second. And then, whoops, turn off the highlight. And this gives us, uh, whoops, kind of a poor man's animation. Let's see, what do I forget here? Um, that's the button we're dealing with. There you go, for half a second, that one will blink. Great. All right, so our problem comes in that we want to iterate through every element of the sequence. And we need a delay within each one. Now, delay, notice, is, a, um, is an asynchronous macro, right? So it's actually going to take some time outside of what you might think of as the main processing thread. So we can't just simply use a for each loop and iterate through everything in the sequence and do this little block. Um, because what will happen is we'll call highlight on each of them and then the delay will happen. So this is another part of this uh, demo that, that took me some time to sort out. Um, thankfully, there's some, some helpful people on the discussion boards and I saw that there's a, a nice trick here where we can make a new for each loop which embeds a delay. So that's what I'm going to do. Here's our plan. We're going to look at the implementation of the for each loop. So this macro, we can double click on it and here it is, right? This is for each. That's what it looks like. Um, and what we can do is modify this so that we can include a call to delay between each element. So I'm going to just highlight the whole thing and copy it. 
back over here, I'm going to make a new, let's see, it's over in blueprints. I'm going to make a blueprint macro library. I don't think the superclass really matters here, so I'll just make it actor. And we'll call this my macro library. It's a fine name. And we're going to put in a macro that I will call for each with delay. I'll move these guys out of the way a little bit and then paste in. All right, so now there's a bit of plumbing to do. Maybe I'll speed up this part of the video. Because what we need to do is uh, reintroduce the inputs, uh, input parameters, and the output parameters from standard macro. So let's see if I can do that real quick. Okay, so this sets us up with a for each loop that's just like the standard one. Here's the trick. We're going to add into outputs a new output called, let's call it a delay out, and this will be an exec. Inputs will do a delay in, and that will be an exec. And what we want to do is, after the sequence is done, or in the middle, before we go on to incre incrementing the loop counter, we're going to call delay out. And then delay in will come in. Right, we don't need this at all. Because once we're done with that, we're going to call delay out. Delay in will bring us back into the next step. There it is. So we're taking what was a simple sequence and breaking it into this delay out and delay in. All right, so that's a lot of plumbing. Let's go back over here. What we want to be able to call is for each loop, for each with delay. All right, so what are we iterating through? The sequence. And this is what happens when we call play sequence. All right, our loop body will look like this. We're going to do the highlight, including a delay of 0.5. This is the index of the button that we're going to highlight. I don't think we care about array index. After we're done with that, we're going to patch in a delay. I'm going to make this delay just a little bit longer than this delay so that we have a little gap between. Because remember, this is all essentially happening at once. So we're hitting this delay and this delay essentially at the same time at runtime. Let's try it. Not too shabby. All right, that's a good stopping point. Next time, let's see if we can actually finish the sequence puzzle.